Anna Hemming, who used to be a GP with the NHS and now runs a private clinic. Good evening, Anna. Thank you for joining me. Um, first of all, can I just ask you on a personal level, why did you make the transition from the NHS into private care? So I've actually already, oh, from, right from the beginning of my career, uh, led a very varied portfolio. So I used to be an army doctor, came into the NHS whilst working uh, within the private sector. So I've juggled many things all the way through my career. So it hasn't necessarily been a step from one to the other. But what became apparent to me were that the, the treatments and services that I wanted to give my patients were not actually available on the NHS. And, and probably rightly so, um, but it was where my career was going. And so I developed my own private practice. So um, when you were working as, as a GP, was missed appointments a huge issue? I think across the board, we've got, I mean, this is an incredible topic to discuss, but across the board, there are a lot of appointments, both in general practice and in hospital medicine that do get missed. And it, there will be a, a a really big range of reasons why, um, maybe linked to appointments or just forgetting them. But I think, and I did think during the time that I was a, a GP, that it, it would be a good thing to do to try and, and make it more difficult for patients to miss those appointments and by taking deposits or a, a small fee or a cancellation fee if, if they miss an appointment would potentially be a good idea. Um, Rishi Sanak has said that he thinks he would introduce a £10 fine for missed GP appointments. Does that seem like the answer to you? I think it's one potential um, option. I mean, I think it should be trialled. Uh, the actual amounts and how it's um, organised is, is obviously something that needs to be discussed. But then... If, if you also think about different systems across Europe, which I think has been mentioned already, people do pay a small amount of money to go and see their GP. But we also go to dentists and pay a small amount under the NHS for um, dental appointments, as well as going to see the optician. So somehow the general practice service, which is also subcontracted from um, the government, uh, has missed out on this. So I don't think it's really something new. I think it's something that people do already, but they don't necessarily realize they do it. So as, as a private practitioner now, how many people miss their appointments with you? Very, very few. But then I have a system in place whereby you know, it's not in their interest to miss their appointments. That kind of proves the point, really, doesn't it? When, when people are abusing a system, perhaps, because it is free, and I think you, you know, sometimes it is maybe uh, busy people who, who book in to get something done or to see a doctor, maybe they feel better by the time the appointment comes around and they don't necessarily think... Um, to cancel it, to phone the GP to let them know they no longer need that appointment for the sore throat or whatever it, whatever it is. Um, because that, but maybe that can be changed with a, with a cultural shift, Anna. Maybe it's about somehow encouraging British people to once again appreciate the NHS and not just take it for granted. I think so. And I think a number of things have been made, talking about uh, the, the medical contracts that junior doctors have and, and various things. And I, I do think that doctors and the medical profession has been devalued over the last 10 years. And I've seen it in, in my career and how patients have behaved uh, towards me personally, but also towards my colleagues. And I, I don't, you know, I'm not saying that doctors should be held on a pedestal or anything like that, but showing up to your appointment is one way that you can actually help the system because if you miss it and you actually need to see the doctor, then you're going to take up a second appointment. And that kind of behavior just can't go on because the system can't cope with it. There was another interesting point that you mentioned, and that was someone coming to see the doctor with a sore throat. Um, I actually don't think the majority of people need to see a doctor with a sore throat. So maybe we need to have some kind of education going even into the schools to, to sort of help educate people what an illness is and what they can look after at home. Now, obviously, some sore throats do need to be seen. Uh, we can't sort of rule everything out. But um, I think people need to be a little bit more aware about self-care and what they should be presenting to a GP or a medical practice, walk-in centres and A&E.